Hello and welcome back. Okay, so I've got a kit. Now, this is a Smart Track vehicle DIY kit from Digit Space, and they've sent me this kit for free, so this is a sponsored video. Let's have a look. So, this is Smart Track vehicle DIY kit D2 1. Not sure what that means, but it's a small little two wheeled robot. Parts list looks quite simple. Seems to use a PCB as its main structural body, which is an interesting little technique. But it's only $2.85. It's a quite a cheap little robot. I'm quite interested to see what it does. Two screws, two motors. So they have like a elastic strap that holds them to the gearbox. These look like they might be repurposed pulleys. The gates of the instructions are in Chinese and not very extensive. Let's see if we can work out what to do. So we've got four values of resistor, a couple of clear LEDs. These look like LDRs, light dependent resistors. Bolt of some kind, chip with a socket, two potentiometers, a couple of transistor-like devices. Can't see what they are. These are the same value. LM393. Okay, so this is interesting. I thought maybe this chip was going to be a microcontroller. It is actually an analog comparator. So my guess is there's some kind of reflective light pickup with the LEDs and the LDRs that's then fed into the comparator to then drive the motors. So it will follow a track or something. That's kind of cool. Okay, let's take a look at these resistors. I am not one of these experts that knows the color code off the top of my head. I'll get my multimeter out. Right, so these are 3.2K, 3.27K, so R3 and R4 are 3.3K. Right, 7 and 8 are 1K, which is indeed those. Right, 9 and 10 are just labelled 10. Yes, it's actually 10 ohm. Very low resistance. So these must be the 51. Right, so that's all the resistors. This kind of through hole soldering is very straightforward. It's an absolute joy to do, to be honest, compared to some of the surface mount stuff I've been attempting recently. All right, is that everything? Looks good.
Okay, now what? Now with this board, one thing to be very careful of is the wiring on the board is actually, looks like it's been done symmetrical. So the LEDs are 180 degrees different. Transistors are the same way around though. I'll never forget that uh, speed challenge kit build I did ages ago. So I ended up with resistor trimmings all over the place. Now so far this has been quite easy to solder. And whilst the documentation is fairly impenetrable the circuit diagram has been useful in trying to decode a couple of bits. Okay, I don't think there's anything to stop me putting the switch on now. Okay, so I believe these LEDs and the LDRs face downwards we got the wiring for the battery and the motors to do. And I believe this is actually a kind of bearing point, if I'm reading this diagram properly. Okay, Need to work out what to do with these LEDs now. Now looking at the picture on the website, I don't think these go flush. Doubt these do either. Now my guess for the operation is that these are expected to produce a reflection off a light or dark line. And so probably the closer the better as long as there's a little bit of space for reflection. I'm going to try and hold these very slightly under tension for the first wire. And I can adjust them around a bit before I put the second one in. wires on these LDRs were quite crumpled. And my best guess here is we want to avoid putting the LDR too far up because we want reflected light. Because now I'm worried I've made a terrible mistake on the ordering of these components because I've got the motors to go. Okay, well that looks fairly symmetrical. I think these screws are very slightly different. Some have slightly flatter heads. Okay, well I've got no idea which way around these motors go or the wires on the motor. I don't know if I'm quite bold enough to trim the wires down on the battery.
And I can't believe something that runs off two 1.5 volt batteries quite needs this uh, thickness of wire. Be best off tinning this wire. These contacts aren't taking solder terribly well. Now everything I've looked at I cannot determine the correct polarity for these uh, battery terminals. Also assume that it's going to be pretty obvious if I get it wrong. the right screw. Must be the one with the more rounded top. Okay. I'm going to guess that the lower wire, in this case the purple one, goes to the nearest pad. I have no basis to guess this. Maybe I should be taking the right hand one to a common pin, in which case it would be the blue that goes, goes to that pad. You see, if I was clever, I would have deliberately done them the opposite way from one another, because that would have shown one to be correct and one to be wrong, so the maximum number I was resoldering would just be the one. But I only thought about that after the fact. I seem to have two screws left over. I've got a sneaking suspicion I'm supposed to use them on the battery holder. I've got to find some batteries. Okay, well I've got some batteries. If I'm interpreting the function of this properly. One side of one of these LDRs is in properly. If this wheel were to drive forward, it turns, so I suspect it's looking for a dark line, it tries to keep them both on the dark, so then if it drifts off to the light, the wheel, the motor speeds up and turns it back on. The question is what constitutes dark enough, and is that wide enough? Right, let's give it some power and see what happens. <laughs> oh, I see, it's the opposite way around to what I thought. It's the motors are, are wired to the opposite sensors. That makes more sense actually. I've definitely got one of these motors wrong. So I've never seen a motor reverse, so my guess is this side is wrong and it should be driving forward.
Okay, that shows a bit of promise. Okay, so that side works, and that doesn't. Well, that looks quite promising. Now, what I'm going to do now is go and take this somewhere with a bit more space and see if I can uh, make it do something a bit more interesting. Oh man, that's awesome. I thought I was going to have to end up tuning those pots a bit more, but uh, I might be able to make it run a bit smoother, but that's awesome. Okay, well, that was quite fun, actually. It was an interesting build. I didn't make any particularly serious mistakes. The only real complexity was not being sure which way around the wires went on the motors, but uh, that was easy enough to solve. I was expecting I'd need to do more tuning, but uh, really and truly just kind of holding it over the line and uh, getting it to the point where the motors would uh, would spin conditionally on, the, on where the line was, was all you needed. I think maybe if you tune the thickness of the line and got these exactly right, you might be able to make it go around the loop a bit smoother. Since it goes straight forward without the black line, you might even be able to make a, like a figure of eight or something by uh, just leaving a, a gap in the middle. That might take a bit of care though. Be interesting to give it a try sometime. A link to Digit Space and the kit itself is on the description. But uh, I hope you found this interesting. Thanks a lot for watching and I will see you again soon. Goodbye.